Nice night, huh? I'm having second thoughts about this one. Hey, I'm gonna go check it out. If it looks dicey, I'll be right back. If it looks dicey? Hillbilly, you've been at this way too long. Damn walkie. There. Good as no. Scout. Hey, Scout. Here we go. This level can be one of the easiest ones or one of the hardest ones, depending on whether you follow the incredibly obvious guidelines set out for you. Unlike most of the other levels where it's okay to walk around and scavenge, this one is incredibly linear. Straying too far off the linear path is a very easy way to die. Excuse me, sir, I do believe I hit you. You could argue there are some narratively interesting things that happen in this location, but this location is just a marker for me. It's a marker that says, hey, you're almost at the end of the game. It's not a location I find interesting for other reasons. It's basically just move from point A to point B and then back to point A, but a different way this time. It doesn't help that the train cars are arranged in such a way that, th that this just appears to be a level made of corridors, very cramped corridors. Granted, it's a unique set piece for the game. And the level is only five minutes long, but I suppose five minutes in a game that's two hours total is a lot of time, relatively. There's so little in this level to talk about that I'm talking about how little there is in this level to talk about. At least I still get to hit zombies with a bat. There you are. Jackpot. Spotted a lot one. Can you initiate rescue? Ah, negative. Pick up the swarm. Poor bat. Oh shit. I'm the moon girl, man. Moral. Oh, what the hell? You ditched me, man. Get up and go. They're coming at your heart, son. Man, where are you? Hurry it up, I'm counting at least two yeah, yeah, that's more like it. Oh, that's better. Try again, boy, but don't slow down. I'm waiting to talk Bitch. Man, I got a bone to pick with you. I saw you fall. Your head's bleeding. No, I'm okay. Chopper kicked up some shit is all. Is it Merle up here? No, just me. You wait, your brother Merle? You talked to him down there? Yeah, on the walkie. He said... That walkie? It's broken. It must have happened when you fell. It doesn't even have batteries. But I... Let's go. We're about to miss the evacuation. No, but... Let's go, Daryl.
So I suppose there were worse ideas to be had as far as narrative is concerned, you know. Having Daryl hit his head and hallucinate that Merle is talking to him and coaching him through the, uh, through the train yard, not a terrible idea. Also helps guide the player through what would otherwise be a maze. Makes the level a lot easier and is slightly more interesting than the normal standard of writing this game has. Daryl should probably get his head looked at though, and I'm a little... It seems a little odd that Scout doesn't seem more concerned. Frankly, like, Scout was concerned that Daryl's head was bleeding, but not concerned that Daryl hallucinated his brother's voice. One of those seems slightly more concerning than the other, if you ask me. And it's the one involving hallucination. She, she actually seemed kind of indignant when Daryl brought up that he heard Merle's voice. I figure she would be like, hey man, we need to get you some medical attention or something. It ain't normal to be hearing your brother's voice through a walkie that doesn't have batteries, but... I don't know. Have you noticed that a lot of the objects in this game have physics? Really bad physics, but they don't... They shouldn't have physics to begin with. Not every game needs physics, you know? There is one specific element of this game that benefits from physics, but it's not the trash bags or this suitcase I keep kicking across the ground, no. These mundane objects didn't need physics, and it probably would have put put a slightly less stress on the development team if they didn't include them. Seeing your father's a bad idea. Saying goodbye on the radio. It's the best thing to do. When I was seven, I wanted a dog in the worst way. But uh, my dad has always had allergies real bad. One day, he came home with a brand new puppy and a grin ear to ear. Even though my dad hates needles, he got a shot every week for 14 years and never said one word. Daryl, I'm half the person he is, and he loves me twice as much as I deserve. You're not gonna evacuate, are you? He's my dad. What would you do in my place? <laughs> 